Welcome to the tip channel. That is perfection. Hello and welcome back to That Is Perfection. Started a little project here and I decided to share a little bit of it with you. This is actually a catico. Now catico is a place where the cats can go outside and enjoy some fresh air. Something that my wife requested and uh, my wife's been with me for 40 years and the secret to life is you do what they tell you to do. Anyways, this is my home and uh, I originally built this. Now, why anybody would build a home with a 19 foot high ceiling in the family room and span three levels of cathedral ceiling? I don't know. I guess the expression, young and dumb. I never thought at 65 years old, I would be the one out here doing the maintenance on this. But the aluminum was getting faded and I decided, well, if we're gonna do this, let's go ahead and update the entire front facade. So I bent some aluminum and I wanted it to look like individual boards. So what I did was put a couple of boards, bend the aluminum accordingly to give it that double board effect. Now, we're going to do some metal on the bottom of this. I want to go ahead and change the uh, siding on the, on the house here to metal as well to pull everything together. Now, actually, most of it will be screened in, uh, but we chose this location because we are in a royal, a rule, a royal, a, no, not a royal, a rural area. So we have bears, we have foxes, we have coyotes, we have mean tomcats in the neighborhood. So what we did we chose this location uh it's a porch that we don't even use uh it's already elevated up about six feet i'm going to do some metal for an additional three feet so that our animals are safe whenever they come out here now i ordered the metal for the exterior of our project this morning uh while i'm waiting for that to come in i'm going to go ahead and finish the wood for the interior of the catico now, I've chosen a product from Home Depot, and it, uh, when it's up, it looks like beadboard. Uh, it's approximately about three quarters thick, just a little light, and uh, it measures about six, but covers about five inches. Uh, I know, you're thinking, Catico, finish the inside of it. Hey, it wouldn't be perfection if I didn't finish the inside. So we're going to try to get this through the spray booth today, so it's good to go. Well, we got all of our interior beadboard through the spray booth yesterday, and that's all good to go. Any of those of you who would like to see me finish product, check out my video, Finishing with ML Campbell. All right, next up for our catico, my wife has this special wire picked out where the cats aren't supposed to be able to get their uh, paws caught in it and what have you. She wants this on the inside of the catico. And then she wants screens on the outside so that she can leave the door from the house open and not have to worry about insects coming in. Now, the wire on the inside next to my cats, I don't want any sharp edges exposed. So what I'm actually doing is making a frame. And uh, what I'll do is I'll make the frame and then I'll staple the wire to the back side and then screw it up into place. And then naturally there won't be any edges exposed. Now, to do this, I'm doing exactly the same as what I would if I was making a cabinet for a person's kitchen. Uh, and what I've actually done is that I've got two Craig pocket holes uh, in my stouts, and I'll be screwing that to my rails. Now, I have an air uh, Craig machine. You don't have to invest into that. A Craig jig like this served me well for years. And basically you clamp the board in here, then it comes with a drill bit and you drill down through. It will give you that same pocket hole look that you're seeing on mine. Now we'll be using a water-based glue and uh, putting the water-based glue on. And then this again is manufactured by Craig. This is a clamp that will hold everything all nice and tight while you zip the screws in.
and just that easy you've got one strong frame so that's what we'll be doing for both the inside and the outside of the Catico. Uh, I want to give it a good look. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do the screen. Uh, when I get to that part, I'll do another video. Okay, we have all of our frames done for the interior of our Catico. Uh, my wife did the research on this, and you don't question your wife. Uh, she said that we needed a half-inch square screen so that the cats don't get their claws stuck in it. So each square is half by half, and this is galvanized for uh, exterior use. Now this is by a company called Everbuilt, and I purchased it at Home Depot. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to put this on the back side of our frame so that we don't have any sharp edges exposed. And uh, I'll be attaching this with a half inch long, quarter inch crown, 18 gauge staple. Uh, you could naturally use a normal handheld staple gun. Arrow also makes a staple gun that shoots a round staple, which again is a hand stapler. It's made for like coax and cat five. I think that would probably work just as well. But naturally, I have that, so I'm using it. We have all of our wire on the inside of our Catico, but my wife wants a screen on the exterior to keep bugs out. She wants to be able to leave the door open from the house into the catico, not have to worry about bugs into the house. And from what she explained to me, some cats can also be allergic to bee stings and what have you. So when we're doing the exterior screens now, I made the frame the same as what we did on the interior of the catico uh, for the fencing. Now, my wife tells me I need to use a pet-resistant screen. And it looks like the difference is that this is made out of plastic instead of some type of aluminum. Now, I'll be stapling this to the frame. And then, naturally, once I put the frame up, you won't see the ragged edges of the screen. Um, I am going to be using a staple gun with a galvanized staple. And what I'm going to do also is that I'm going to try to stop the screen about an inch away from the end of my boards. Just a little concerned that if I go to screw this into place, that the screen might tend to get caught up in the screw. Now, in preparation for the metal for your roof, these are referred to as your roof rafter. Now, we're not going to do any ceiling joists in here. I'm going to go for a cathedral ceiling look. So, um, we don't have any ceiling joists. Uh, and then after you have your rafters in, and these can actually be spaced up to four feet apart. Now, lumber's back down again, so I'm basically on a two foot center. And then you run two before strips across the roof rafters and uh, those you want to space about two feet apart and that's actually what you're going to screw your roof metal into now some people will do a standard 16 inch on center uh, roof and then put osb on and screw it down into the osb i'm not a fan of screwing into osb now it's also a good practice to add in some hurricane ties all that's going to do is to tie the walls together with the roof so that uh, whenever you have strong winds and what have you in the neighborhood, there won't be a problem with the roof wanting to lift off of the structure. Yesterday, we finished installing our fence on all of our frames for the interior of our project. And I got a phone call that my metal was ready. So I went down and picked it up yesterday and we're ready to start some of the installation. And I'm going to share some of the tips on installing that. Now, there's some controversy between installers as how to cut metal. They say, some say, oh, it's, it's got to be pinched whenever you cut it. Uh, it's going to rust if you cut it with a saw. I built my shed three years ago. There's absolutely no rust on it whatsoever. Everything was cut with a circular saw with an abrasive blade. And I'll cover that after a bit as well. Uh, today, what I'm going to start with is this piece needs to be ripped down through the middle. And for that, I prefer to use a shear. Now, 
You don't have to buy these. You can get them at the rental place uh, and just rent it for the day. But these do a real nice job whenever you're doing a straight cut. I don't really care for them trying to do it uh, across the ribs. Uh, just a little cumbersome. But we'll show you some saw techniques whenever we get to that part. But right now, we'll use a shear. We're getting ready to cut the metal for our catacote project. Now, for cutting that, I just use a normal circular saw. And you can use an abrasive blade. Now, the problem with an abrasive blade is this great for, like, cutting angle irons and things like that. But whenever you get into this thin metal, what happens is, is that it just literally tears it up. I don't know whether you can see this, but... See the burr on that side and the burr on this side? So very, very ragged, if you will, in regards to the cut. So I don't like using an abrasive blade on this thin metal. Now, another option that you can do is to use a fine tooth carbide plate. And uh, also, you can take and put it in your saw backwards so that the teeth isn't ripping. Now, this is an old trick that we used to do with aluminum siding. Now, I know you young folks are saying, what's aluminum siding? <laughs> that was before vinyl. But anyways, uh, that will work just as well. I prefer to use a blade. And this is actually made by Rigid. And it's made for metal cutting. So what this has is it has diamonds on the edge of it. Now, to maintain a nice straight cut, and you don't have to have this. You could take and put a pencil line on. Use your circuit saw and cut it. You're going to be going into J channels and stuff like that where you're really not seeing the edge anyways. But there may be some places that you will have an edge exposed. Um, I like using a Craig AccuCut track saw. And basically what it is, is that there is a piece that mounts on your saw. This goes right into this track and follows this track along. So it gives you a nice straight cut. The neat thing about this AccuCut as well is that it has these pads on the back side. And I don't know what they're made of, but it's an anti-slid. So you don't have to clamp it or anything. You just lay it on your project, take your circular saw, put it in there on your track, and buzz your cut. So nice straight cut, uh, relatively inexpensive. I think this is like 100 bucks or something. So not that expensive. You can also buy uh, additional pieces if you want to do like an eight foot cut with this product this works real nice so we'll get everything set up and we'll do a shot of cutting the actual metal now in setting up the craig accu cut it's relatively simple i'm sure that there's thousands of videos on youtube about the setup of this but basically what you have is what's referred to as a sacrificial edge what that means is that you're going to set up your saw if it cuts a little bit off of that plastic, it's okay. Uh, but then that plastic's always going to be your guideline. So you just line it right up on your pencil mark. And on your saw itself, your saw is going to slide into this. This is an adjustment over here that allows you to uh, move your saw back and forth on the sled. Uh, once you get it into position, so it's just right there at the sacrificial edge, you go ahead and tighten these two screws here to hold your saw into place. Your saw basically is going to set right down on the AccuCut, and you're ready to make your cut. No clamping, just line up the two pencil marks, and you're ready to make your cut. So we'll go ahead and do that. As soon as I plug the saw in. Hey, what can I say? I'm old. Now, if you notice, what I did was I cut the metal from the back side so that I'm not throwing those hot sparks on the painted surface. Just another little tip from the tip channel. Now, when you're ready to start your metal, there are two different types of ends. See how this one just comes down and stops? And then this side comes down and has a little flat spot. Now, this is the piece that you would put on first. 
and then the other side would overlap this piece and it ends up stopping about about right in here that gives you a nice airtight uh look and like i said uh, a real nice look so two different sides this side goes under and this side goes over this is the interior of our catio and it made it very nice because we go straight out our french doors right onto the catio and uh, we did a cathedral ceiling in the catio and that's covered in a pine beadboard covered the beam in also pine beadboard we did a wings clock panel and again that's all done in the pine beadboard uh, the bump out is done in luminized lumber in case we get some uh, rain in it's not going to get hurt we did a pargo solid vinyl laminate on the floor makes it really nice as far as cleaning up and what have you a couple of perches and we have the fencing on the inside and the insect screen on the outside which is working out very well on keeping everything out and keeping everything in the exterior of the catio uh, naturally we did metal down at the bottom protecting our cats from any uh, predators that may show up we have the screen uh, done in frames on the outside if there's ever any issues with the screen we can simply remove some screws and take them off and uh, go ahead and repair them so we have the metal on the bottom we did a two foot bump out to increase the size of the catio and uh, it seemed to work out very well the cats really like the bump out area it's about two feet off the floor so they can jump right up and enjoy the outdoors so, so how did our project turn out it's the tip channel that is perfection i hope you found this informative and if you did, please like and subscribe and have a great day.